<laughs> Today on Give Me Shelter, Pet Helpers has dedicated a special day to trap, spay, neuter, and release a group of feral cats to help control the local overpopulation. Can Dee Dee trap two fertile males from a colony before the day ends? You could get a claw in you. There's no question about that. An approaching thunderstorm and inexperienced volunteers are just two of the challenges facing Jason and his team as they race to build a dog pen for a local resident. We could probably use a hand getting the fencing up. We could really use a hand. Dr. McKim and her staff are dedicating the day to spaying and neutering over 30 feral cats brought in by volunteers around the community to help decrease the local overpopulation. We have a very active community. Uh, they're called TNR, which stands for Trap, Neuter, and Release. It's an alternative to the former program of Trap and Euthanize. We have days like this to kind of get everybody in the TNR community a little bit enthusiastic. D.D. Tyler, a volunteer at Pet Helpers, is meeting with a feral cat colony caregiver to trap two unneutered male cats that have been reproducing within the colony. Hey, Dee Dee. Hey, how are you, Liz? Glad we could make this happen for these kitties know, tonight, hopefully. I'm hopefully, ho we'll hopefully we'll have one. some luck. I've been volunteering at Pet Helpers now for almost seven years. Pet Helpers is how I spend my free time, pretty much. It's how I give back to the community as well. That one right there, uh, that's my, that one he's my man. He's gonna yeah. be, he's the one I'm after, really. And then this guy right here, this gray and white one, he's also one that I want to, because I know he's not fixed. People don't realize it, how many cats are out there. So what we're all about is trying to reduce those numbers and help these guys live a, a, you know, a decent life out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and trap the cats that I know that need to be fixed. We're gonna bring them into the clinic. They will be set up for surgery, for spaying or neutering, and have their vaccinations uh, given to them, as well as a microchip. We don't believe in euthanizing feral cats because we believe that they are happy, just as happy living out their lives outside. As long as they're not bothering anybody, we feel like they deserve to live too. Okay. So we need to step back and uh, just wait for him to go over there, hopefully. I may have to stay there for an hour or two. I may not have any success at all. Chain Charleston is a program that uh, three of us at Pet Helpers started about a year ago. And what we found is that people in our community love their dogs, um, but a lot of times they can't have their dogs inside. The dog being on a chain can make that dog very protective, uh, very aggressive. So uh, what we wanted to do was build the dogs a fence that they could run around in, and it decreases their aggression, and it brings the family closer to the dog. Kendra heard about our program and she filled out our questionnaire. You have to own your property. You have to agree to get your animals spayed and neutered. She loved her dog and she wanted a better life for her dog. They took Wiscata to a friend's house just because it's so hot and rainy and stuff. And she's usually tied up over there, whereas she was wandering and ending up down at the beach with uh, the rest of the tribe of dogs. When not tethered, she roams around the neighborhood which is, uh, everybody's friendly, but it's not safe um, to many cars. I'm going to get you to give me a hand doing something real quick, if you don't mind, sir. And actually, can I borrow you too, Jess, just for one second? Um, so basically what I need to do is I need to get as level of an eye across the middle poles, and then when you mark, just mark right at the bottom of it. It's always frustrating when you're trying to figure something out and help someone else figure it out at the same time. None of us are professionals when it comes to building fences. Starting off from scratch, it can take longer. The team is making progress despite the hot summer heat, but Jason is still missing a handful of his lead volunteers. 
I wish Kristen was here because we really needed her between like just handing out materials, getting the water to the holes, you know, important things. Yeah, well, I knew she said she didn't know if she could make it to this build, uh, but I know she's going to get some future builds too. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, Kristen should have been here a while ago. Uh, she's never missed a fence build. If she misses this one, it's going to be very strange. Uh, I'm running a little late today, and I have some news for Jason that I'm kind of nervous about telling him about. And I probably should have told him before this uh, fence build, um, but I didn't. But now I'm late, and so now I have to explain to him why I was late. So I'm really hoping he doesn't freak out. Where are you? You need to come here. We need you here, not there. <laughs> You're coming out here right now? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Kristen's on the way. Woohoo! Kyle will be here at when, 11? Um, I need to talk with him. He is taking the MCAT in two weeks. So oh, he's got to study. He needs to study. But if we're really far behind, he said he'd come out and help out a little more, too. Yeah, well, we might want to call in reinforcements. Kim, actually, starter of Unchained Charleston. Her husband, Kyle, is my man. He's uh, actually number two top dog here, aside from Kristen, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, we need you. Please. Hey, how's it going? Please. We're a little bit behind where we want to be. Uh, we could probably use a hand getting the fencing up if you have a little bit of time. We could really use a hand. OK, that sounds great. We'd really appreciate it. All right, talk to you later. Bye. That is so awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Although Kyle and Kristen are on their way to help out, a new challenge arises involving Mother Nature. It's looking like it might rain right now, and that's okay if it's just sprinkling a little bit or raining a bit, but um, when we put the quick creed in, we want to make sure that that's going to dry and set pretty well um, before we let the dogs in, because if they come in and the quick creed is still wet, they can still dig out. I'm going to have to rush all the bags of concrete back into the van and then come and work on Sunday. I don't mind for the critters, but I want to sleep in tomorrow. I'm waiting for this cat to figure out whether it's going to go under my trap, anticipating, hoping it, that it will, but not sure if it will. Here he comes. All right, here he comes. Once he goes under there, I'm going to cover this trap. I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to cover the trap so it calms him down, and then I'll move him out. Okay. And he's going. So he's nice and hunkered down in there. And I'm going to get ready to pull right now. I'm going to get ready to pull right now. You, you put your hands on one of those traps without having a a cover plate on the handle part, you could get a claw in you. There's no question about that. Come on, buddy. Come on. Ch -ch -ch. Feral cats do not like to be picked up, so I don't pick them up. I personally experienced it myself. I had to go to the doctor because a cat bit me in my bone. I mean, it got infected. My whole arm up here was red. They can hurt you if you put yourself in a position to do that. Okay. All right, so he's done. After a safe and successful trapping, Dee Dee has one cat down and one more to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The volunteers are racing against time to build the fence before a potential rainstorm hits. Finally, Kristen has arrived to help speed things up. Thank God Kristen's here. It's uh, been long enough. We need her. She's our queen bee, and we need her by our side. So where have you been? You're late. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late, buddy, but I got <laughs> some news. This is my last day with pet helpers. I uh, took another job at another shelter in the area. Sucks. Kristen's gone. Uh, Kristen actually got me started at Pet Helpers. I won't know what to do while she's gone. It is kind of sad for both of us because um, we work so closely together and we're not going to get to see each other every day and so that is a sad part for us. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, but it was a great opportunity so I had to take it. You're still coming to the Bills, right? I am. I'm still going to be Because you are unchained. Yes. Just, I'm still going to help yeah. you out with the Bills, but I'm sorry I'm late today. 
It's good that she's going to another shelter. She's helping out. She's, she's doing what she's meant to do, but I'd rather have her by my side than, you know, gone. Back at the feral cat colony, Dee Dee and Liz are preparing to trap a second male cat that has been breeding with other females. If you could go grab a cup of food and shake it like you're going to feed them. Okay. And so what you want, idea is to get them to come around because they, you know, they're familiar right. with you. Right. Okay. Nearby. Okay. I'll do that. Let me go. There's the one I need right there. There's a gray and white cat who's unneutered. I know he's not fixed because his ears not clipped. First of all, oh, and he's not interested. Hmm, okay. Maybe if Liz puts some food up there, then they might decide to come out. These cats have a real keen intuition sometimes. Uh, they're pretty smart, actually. They, uh, they know when something's up. He's walking around. He's checking things out. Oh, well, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All righty. I'm getting ready. Ooh. So if I don't get this guy tonight, he's going to go out and impregnate another female, maybe two or three females, who, who knows? I mean, before you know it, the colony's grown from 10 to 30 in a season. Here, here he goes. Okay. Yep. There he is. All right, so here we go. Got him. Come on, buddy. Go ahead. There we go. Awesome success. Yay. Two Yay. of the ones I really wanted to get. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. No problem. I felt really good about trapping those two guys. Those were the two guys I really wanted to get. Kim has returned from picking up her husband, Kyle. Having an experienced volunteer on site will be essential to helping the new volunteers finish the job. Thank goodness Kyle showed up, so now we're ready to rock and roll. Kim, Kyle, and Jason are really the staff that have been on all the fence builds since we started a year ago. And it's really going to be difficult with these newcomers, it being their first fence build. So we really have to come together as a team, and the direction has to be very clear. We're going to try to pull these closer together okay. so it takes out all the slack in the fence, makes it nice and tight. Oh, dude, we, we, we've been doing it by hand. Well, let's give it a shot for give the first shot. corner. Yeah. All right. While a potential rainstorm remains a threat, the volunteers push on and continue to make progress. Well, let's just pull this, pull this down this way so we can uh, reach. I don't think we made it close enough. Hey guys, sorry, but I gotta run. I gotta go to my other job. No, we're not done. You can't leave. Well, I have to leave uh, the fence build early today because the shelter that I work with right now is having a really big adoption event for the next five days and we need everybody that works there to be on. I will miss you guys, but I'll see you next month at the next right. bill. Okay. You better, because right. if you don't show up, we're yep. coming to your house. Thanks, y'all. Blessings. Bye. 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 Come back soon. It's a bittersweet moment for me. I'm very, very grateful to Pet Helpers because I wouldn't be able to do what I'm getting ready to do at this new shelter if it hadn't been through my experience with Pet Helpers. Without Kristen's leadership, it will be total chaos. Um, but it's usually like that in a shelter, so we'll make it through it. We go through times when we don't have a certain position filled for long, long months. It's rough, it's hard, but everybody pulls together. It's shelter life, it's hard. Dee Dee is on her way back to the clinic to drop off the two male feral cats. They are just two of over 30 feral cats that will be neutered or spayed today. If they have fleas, they'll get treated for fleas. If they have worms, they'll probably both get treated for that. They'll get a distemper and a rabies shot, and they'll get a microchip, and then they will also get an ear tip, which uh, denotes that the visual of that cat's uh, head, you can actually tell he's already been fixed. As with any surgery, whether it be animals or humans, there's always a risk. They could die. They could not come out of the surgery. They could have something going on that we don't really know about. Thinking on the positive side, but they'll, they'll be okay. Dr. McKim and her staff are spaying and neutering over 30 feral cats that have been brought in by volunteers in an effort to decrease the local overpopulation. 
Just one feral cat can have eight to 10 kittens in a litter and two to three litters in a year. After spaying and neutering these feral cats, they will have no chance of reproduction and they will be less likely to fight, get cancer, and spread diseases. The two feral males have been sedated and anesthetized. Dr. McKim begins to neuter them, but she quickly notices they have severe lesions on their paws. When I saw the feet, um, my heart sank because there's not too many things that can do this. They're very uncommon unless there is an underlying situation. Uh, the most common thing is feline leukemia. So my suspicion level arose immediately. We called the caregiver, explained the situation. She authorized us to test for it. I had a, a very strong suspicion that my test was going to be positive, and unfortunately, 10 minutes later when the doc turned, it confirmed our suspicion. They, they did indeed have feline leukemia. If released back into the colony, the cats will be at a high risk of dying a slow and painful death and could spread the disease to the other feral cats. Sorry, boys. So the caregiver agreed that the most humane thing to do was to euthanize the kitties and we did do that while they were still under their anesthetic so that they felt no pain, they, they weren't afraid and they got to go peacefully. Some people think of feral cats as disposable. Obviously we don't feel that way. I went into this profession because I love it. When I get to the point that I can shut it off, it's time for me to stop. The feral cats will be cremated and buried respectfully. The rest of the colony may be at risk of getting feline leukemia and will need to be monitored closely. Y'all watch out, that could shoot into an eye. Oh, nice. Hey, we can still use our socket. The beach is over there. Every fence build is unique, and you have to be sure that the dog will be contained within this unit. And now I personally have to test it myself, because you just never know. All right, try this side. That didn't really work. Thanks for being the guinea pig, Jason. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for you. All right, bows and bowettes, I think we're done. Woo, fence in! Oh, team! That's a fence done fast, about as fast as all of our volunteers have done, and most of you guys are newbies, so go team! Woo! Kendra's not home, so we're gonna wait for Miss to get home, sent the rest of the crew back off to wherever they need to go. Um, I'm gonna hang out, wait for uh, Kendra and the dog to get back, and then we can introduce her to her new habitat. Now please, everyone go home and bathe, because y'all all stink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, Dr. McKim, hey, just came geez. to get an update on the kitties that I brought in yesterday. Oh, it didn't turn out well. So, um, when they came in and were sedated, there were some inflamed foot pads that can be associated with feline leukemia. They were not in good condition. So we ended up humanely euthanizing them. I consider Dee Dee a friend, so it was a little bit tougher to tell her that we were going to have to euthanize these two kitties, but she understands that this was the only recourse for these kitties, that if they were released, uh, their days were very limited and they were not going to be healthy days. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate everything you do. It touched me to see her emotions come out. But I usually don't see those in her. She's usually pretty straightforward and, you know, she, she's a tough lady. Last year we did over 5,000 animals and only lost four. So a day where we're going to lose two cats, even though it's intentional, is um, it's a tough day for all of us. The next step is, you know, just get back with Liz, you know, see what we can do to help the other kitties if they need help. Try to keep the colony as healthy as possible. And that's all we can do is just go out there and try to help these guys as much as we can. Scott was brought back by Kendra's brother and um, got to hang out in a new place. Come on, come on, come on. Sup, 
Kendra? Hey, <laughs> wow, this is so amazing. I said your baby likes thank it. Thank you. Yeah, oh. absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Miss Scotto. It's your mama, baby. Hey, girl, you got a nice home here now. I'm jealous now. You know, <laughs> she loves it. She's so excited. I don't think she expected the fence to be this big. Uh, surprise, surprise. You happy? Yeah, I'm happy too. It's awesome. That is so awesome. It's amazing. I like it. I love it. And I know Moscato loves it too. <laughs> Y'all did a good job. Excellent. All volunteers, all out of love. It's pretty big. That's enough room for her to run around. It surely is. Yeah. Ah, just in time. It's raining. And we're done. Perfect. Well, Jason, I appreciate you and Pet Helpers bringing Moscato this beautiful home here. On Jay Charleston. Strikes again. Y'all did a fabulous job. Well, you rock. I'm going to come back to see your baby very soon, okay. but I have to go home. All it's right. my dinner time. I know that's right. Thank Love you. you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Bye, baby. Bye, baby. Out. You in. I'm out. You in. I'm out. You in. You're always surprised when it's a volunteer group effort. Nobody getting paid. Everybody just coming out to do a good thing. And uh, good thing happened. <laughs>